markets are all about, trying to give you the best value for the animal you bring to us to sell. Today we have to tell you when you come in, we'll try to sell your horse, but if we can't, you're going to have to pay us a commission, we're in business, and take your horse home. Many times the people will not take their horse home because the reason they're in there to sell it, they no longer can afford to feed it, care for it, etc. And, and therefore, I want to make another point very clear. If you are opposed to horse processing, or slaughter as some would prefer it, I'm for you. Don't sell your horse. Care for your horse. For heaven's sakes, don't take it out on a country road and turn it loose, as so many are doing. And if you start a, a horse hospital or a horse rest home, I'm for you. We have 6,000 horses in those today. The more the merrier. But if you're going to start one, then have the resources to continue to feed it. Don't have the situation we've got all over the country now in which horses are being starved to death. From the standpoint of the, of the horse industry, let me just short. There's 9.2 million horses in the United States. Some think that's too many. We have 4.6 million people enjoying those horses. 400,000 full-time jobs. $39 billion industry. $102 billion impact on the U.S. economy generating a $1.9 billion in taxes. I happen to be for rodeos. I happen to be for racing. I respect those that say that that's a cruel and inhumane trap. Tra that's the right of, in of, of opinion. But from the standpoint of the horse industry, when you go buy a horse, and let's say you want a pleasure horse, which we have a lot of folks enjoy the pleasure of horses, you go out and you pay $1,000 for a good horse, one that the kids can ride. When you buy that horse, if you know that the most you'll ever get for that, assuming you can't find another buyer just like you, is 50 bucks, it's going to make you think twice about whether you're going to be able to afford to enjoy that horse or not. That's happening. That's not makeup. That's happening right now. From the standpoint of, of the slaughter industry in the United States, it's interesting when you look at the numbers. In 2006, the last year we had the three plants operating in, two in Texas and one in Illinois, we slaughtered 105,000 head of horses in the United States, 18,000 in Mexico, 25,000 in Canada, a total of 149,000. Last year, 173,000 horses, United States horses, were slaughtered, none in the United States, all in Mexico and Canada. Now, if that's what we want to continue to have, then that's the wishes, that will be the wishes of the Texas legislature, Mr. Chairman. We have a unique rule law here in Texas that says we can't do it. New Mexico is in the process of putting in a plant. Oklahoma is looking very seriously. Missouri is. Wyoming, et cetera, are looking at this. And somebody's going to put a plant in. We have removed the prohibition from the federal level of inspection, post-mortem inspection of horse meat. Uh, that is uh, something I've worked very hard to do. Others differ with me in my position. Or with, I say with me, the Livestock Market Association and you'll hear from others in the horse industry. Now, let me, let me make another point on the humane treatment. There are those that, well, I, I believe, as the American Veterinary Medical Association has stated, that we have uh, used over and over, there are three legal ways to end the life of a horse. Bullet, captive bolt, and chemical. Those are the three legal ways. That's the ways, if you own and you want your horse to be euthanized, you want it buried, taken care of yourself, that's the way you do it. There are no other legal ways that I'm aware of to do it. Bring that up, excuse me, captive what? Captive bolt. That's what's used okay. in processing plants where you have oh, a, a, metal, okay. a metal that goes into okay. the brain yeah. that has... It's like in the movie. The... No country for old men? Old men, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's... Glad you asked the question because that's one of the that's one of the areas. What do you mean by captive boat? And there are those that suggest that that's not humane. And in one or two percent of the time, there are things happen because the horses move, et cetera, et cetera. Same's true on beef. Same things used on hogs, et cetera. But that's what a captive boat is. Uh, the uh, and, and let's say my own personal belief and that of the association that I represent is all three of those are legal and humane. Others will differ. And that's where you'll have to sort out. But uh, my training is at Tarleton State University and at Texas Tech, animal husbandry. Uh, I have a different view of humane treatment than others do. Again, I repeat, though, all of us should agree all animals should be treated humanely from birth until death. That should not be a debatable subject. Final point. If you take the position that we ought not to allow 
horse processing, horse slaughter in the United States, what are you going to do with the unwanted horses? The unintended consequences of the law that was changed in 2006 has been what GAO has certified to. We've got a tremendous number of horses of which the people that own them cannot afford to dispose of them. And there will be those that will criticize saying that horse should never have been bred. Okay, I happen to believe that the horse industry as it's currently constituted is extremely important to the economy of the United States, to the pleasure of those who enjoy horseback riding, who enjoy the horse industry. I happen to believe that's a very good industry. And I, I hear that, that, that all the time that these plants just employed 100 people or et cetera, and all the money goes to foreign interests. Well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an industry that has 400,000 people working for them. If you downsize the industry, which is what they suggest should be done, and that's what will happen. Any industry in which you take the salvage value from that industry, there is no value to that horse once you buy it yourself. No value unless you can find another buyer. You're going to have less horse trailers built, less saddles, less riding clubs, less of everything. That's just normal. Some people want to see that happen. I don't. I want to see the horse industry continue to flourish. I want to see it. I want to see the, my client be able to tell all of you when you bring your horse and you need to receive $300, $500, $600, $1,000 for your horse, I want to be able to have bidders in the stand giving you a bid so that you will walk away knowing that you have received full value. Again, remember, if you don't want your horse to go to slaughter, don't bring it to our market. Don't sell it to a killer buyer. Take care of your horse and you will find Charlie Stenholm will be right there with you. But I really have problems with those that suggest telling me what I can do or I should do with my horse other than treat it humanely. And from a federal standpoint, I really wonder why our federal government continues to believe that they should know best over the individual state. Why the federal government should pass rules saying that we can't inspect horses, even if Texas decides to do it. Why the federal government should be able to tell us what to do or not to do. That's, uh, I've got a lot of information here for you. I know the time constraints. I appreciate very much the opportunity to be here and testify today on behalf of the livestock markets of the United States. We would like to be able to sell horses. We would like to be able to bring you always the highest price we could possibly get from the buyer. If you take away the competition, you're going to get what we've got today. We've got a very unpleasant situation. We've got horses being trucked all over the United States in order to get to Mexico and Canada. That's inhumane. We don't, you know, that's another subject of another day. But uh, that can be corrected. I hope you will see me a fit, and I hope that all will have take a second look at this and begin to say, well, I don't really support horse slaughter, but I do understand that we've got to do something with unwanted horses, and I want them treated as humanely as I possibly can. That, in my opinion, is what will happen if we allow processing to be restored in Texas and in other states that do not object to it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.